I think we've all been there. We'll be walking, hiking, maybe we'll be on a camping trip. Whatever we do, we'll be sitting there and it will seem like a lovely day when all of a sudden the heavens will open and it will decide to rain. Sometimes this just can't be predicted, but there's always a way of making sure that you can stay dry. And it's very simple. A poncho or a tarp is a great way to stay dry. Today I'm going to be focusing on the earlier of the two. A military poncho is a great way to stay dry. Stay dry and keep on moving around. But also there's a little bit more to it than meets the eye. A military style poncho can be used in many setups and those are the ones I'm going to show you today alongside with why I think that a military style poncho is a great way to stay dry. So guys, I think it's pretty safe to say it's Sod's Law that on the one day I actually think it would be a good demonstration for it to rain, it decides in the British Isles to not actually rain. But here is my US military style poncho. Now uh, this poncho I got for £15 on Amazon and as always in my videos all the gear links to all of the gear I mention will be in the description. But um, as you can see it is essentially just a square piece of waterproof fabric with a hood sewn in it. But there's a little bit more to it than meets the eye than just looking like a div, right? All along the sides here, I'll get a little bit closer for you. All along the sides here, there are poppers all the way along, right up till the bottom here. And then on all of the corners, there are these grommets that at the moment have shoelaces on them. That's just how they arrive. But uh, I think like most, I'll probably replace these with, um, with some military paracord. Now uh, another good thing about this poncho, as you probably saw in the intro, is that you can fit a bag underneath it, like this, and it will all be completely waterproof. Which is excellent, because this means that you, if you have a poncho in your bag, you don't have to bother with a, a rain cover for your bag, which cuts down on your weight. Also, for my day pack, I'm actually taking out my DD 3x3 tarp for the moment and just using this. Because as you'll see in a few minutes, you can set this up just a little bit smaller but in the same style as a DD tarp. Now, it's more rectangular than a DD tarp obviously because it's double the size of a square. Uh, another thing I like about this is the fastenings. You can really fasten up the hood there like this. So that if you're really suffering from the weather conditions, you can sort of go Kenny from South Park and sort of walk around like this, like that. Yep, with just your head sticking out. So I do, I like that, and I think that that'll probably work just fine with military paracord as well. However, there are negatives to owning this piece of kit as well. The first and most obvious negative is that it is military, so it's quite spartan in its design. Nothing like Gore-Tex, it's not breathable at all. So I'm already starting to feel like this is having a bit of a greenhouse effect on me because it isn't actually too bad of a day. T uh, 10 or 11 degrees out at the moment, that's centigrade, the correct system. And um, I'm starting to feel it a little bit. But this can also be a positive. In the survival situation, you can set this up in a minute in one of the setups to light a candle in it, and then you can essentially really raise your core body temperature really quickly without too much effort either. So let's go into a few of the setups. One of the first setups is a pretty classic setup for this type of thing, which is basically just square on the ground, and then you raise the hood up, and then you have a shelter inside it. So let's go ahead and do that setup now. Okay, so we have our four pegs here, and the, the ferret actually held up pretty well to the job. So what do we do next? Well, we take our military poncho, and the first thing we have to do is unpop all the poppers, and we get this large, waterproof sheet like this. And we spread it out on the ground, whatever way you think best, but make sure the hood is roughly underneath your overhang. Now you'll notice that these, uh, these things have grommets, but the grommets you can attach cord to like this one came with, with the shoelace cord. But one thing to note, and I'm actually going to use my baton for this, you, you, uh, you shouldn't do it 100% tightly, because that, that's not really the best way of doing it. Okay, now, here we go. Moment of truth, eh? 
actually a plant under here. There we are. Now this gives you an idea of how much you need to change it. You see, obviously we're going to need some changes here. Like for example, this one has actually come undone because I didn't tie it up properly. So there's our first problem. Right, there we go. Is this one still in? Yeah, and it's easier to adjust the pegs. Right, okay. Yeah, perfect. So, what you're going to do is, you see here, on the hood, you actually have the little, oh, you actually have the little drawstring cord, which is meant to tighten the hood, but it has its secondary use when you're building this as a shelter. Pull it up, take the hood, wrap the cord backwards around the hood, and tighten it. I've taken the camera off the mount because it will just be easy to see that way, but I've tied the hood here up to the tree and the tensility, tensility of the tree holds it up. Now, I also adjusted all the corner pegs so that it would be tighter and we ended up with this. But, how is this a shelter? I shall show you in a second. Now here's what you're going to have to do. And it's a bit undignified, but that's basically what bushcraft is, isn't it really? You see, there is a grommet here, so you can peg this down to make it close to the ground, keep the wind out, keep the rain out a little bit better. But here's what you have to do. You have to sort of lie on the floor and then wiggle yourself in like this. Now, as shelters go, it's really not that big. But you can, you can not really lie down in here, so it's more about a survival shelter. So I put my head out here. It's more of a survival shelter than a camping shelter. But one of the things I really like about this is that if there's a lot of dead leaves on the floor, you can drag them in and create a lot of insulation. But this will do if you just want to hide under here with your pack during a rainstorm. So it's actually pretty damn crowded in here. There's not a whole lot of space, but I can be down on the floor and not be touching any of the sides at least. And uh, if you really wanted to look like a mental case, you could undo the hood just there and poke your head through, but I don't know why you'd want to do that. But, it is getting really hot in here actually, <laughs> like a greenhouse. You may want to use this uh, shelter set up, as in the poncho, in a slightly more permanent way, and I will show you that next. For this next setup, you're going to need to have two trees, but they're going to have to be much closer than if you were setting up, say, a hammock or a much larger tent or tarp shelter, like a DD tarp. So I'm just looking around here and thinking where I can put one. I'm going to try and do it on these trees behind me here, as in these two, but may or may not go as planned. Now, much the same as before, for this setup, you're going to need four pegs. So we're just going to do the same as we did and peg down the corners out. And this tarp shelter here that we're setting up is basically your classic tent setup. Nothing really that special. But one thing that this poncho does well at this, actually, is that there are grommets here and here as well, so you can attach it to the trees that way, which I actually really like. But that's not the only reason that this, tom this poncho does this well. And I'll show you in a minute. But on the inside, there's actually a makeshift ridge line. So here we have it all set up. Now, as you're normal, you're going to want to put the hood up as much as you can. But with this setup, you can drape it over the side, and if you're not using it permanently, that will still, kill, still keep all the rain out. But let me show you the inside. So if we look inside, and I had to break into the paracord for the suspension line there. Here we are on the inside. It's quite a nice little, uh, nice little uh, tarp shelter that we got going here. So again, completely waterproof but perhaps a little bit bigger. So this one might be designed for if you and a friend have to stop because you should both be quite easily fitting under here with your bags. And I've set this up so that I can lean on this tree here like a seat. So quite deluxe actually. <laughs> but here's the little ridge line I was talking about. Now it's not right in the middle, but it's sort of on your chest when you wear it. And you can tie this out and it's got quite a lot of cord on it. So you could tie this out and maybe bring it up forwards a little bit, which could maybe do sort of like a poncho sort of a uh, 
a lean-to with a with a porch which might work quite well I won't do that today because I think you guys can pretty much figure out how to mess around with the rest of the settings for this tarp by yourself not tarp poncho but I've used it as a tarp but those are just two shelter setups now the poncho itself actually packs away very small so this would actually be at home until like an EDC maybe uh, if you're willing maybe in the winter months to give up a few other items Another option you can use this for is if you set it up in the evening, you could use it as a dew catcher in the morning. Uh, also, say if you put it out on a few stakes, you could use it as a wash basin for a camp, which I think is actually a pretty decent way of doing it, because I've done that with a bin bag before and it works very well, because it's quite it's easier to wash with and things like that. Uh, another way that you can use this is, within reason, you could use it as a fire reflector. Don't put it too close, because obviously as a plasticated material it will burn up quite easily. But um, that will work quite well. But also something you could do is if you set it up as like pegged with a few stakes, like much larger stakes, you could use it as a windbreak for a camp, which is just two or three more of the many, many more uses that this small piece of kit has to offer. You can also use it as a ground sheet, say if you're getting it in and out of your hammock or your tent. Ground sheet, this would work excellently. Also, if you're, say, if you're just tarp camping, you can put this underneath your sleep system to keep you dry and away from the creeper crawlies. So I really like this piece of kit, and uh, the only issue I have with it is it's not breathable at all, which could be a positive or a negative, depending on what situation you're using it in. But in summer, that's got to be a negative. In winter, maybe not so much. But I love this piece of kit, and I'm probably going to give it a solid 8 out of 10 as a piece of kit. I would recommend getting this because it packs down about half the size of a tarp but for a hiking day pack you want to lose that weight. So thank you very much for watching this video. Um, I actually have a video on the DD tarp which can do things like this just perhaps a little bit better. So there's the DD tarp video if you want to have a look at that. Uh, please like, comment and subscribe. Uh, I try to, well I do actually, put a video out every Saturday. So that's good, that's uh, survival tutorials, gear reviews and prepping sometimes. Uh, thank you very much. There's my Twitter app if you want to hear me drivel for hours of the day. I sometimes put pictures of videos on there but I always tweet when my videos come out. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it and I'll see you in the next one.